Typically, we ignore what's called the bulk viscosity when calculating flow problems. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about what a bulk viscosity is. Um, in this, I'm going to follow discussions of Landau and Lifshitz, especially their section 15 and their section 78. And these are good places to go and read more about these. Um, and, and bulk viscosities may have, may have some real um, impact in, in some systems of interest. So previously, we wrote down our stress tensor, our viscous stress tensor. Um, and, and we said that there was a, most, a general form, right? We said that, um, that pi sub ij is, uh, is a e sub ij and then uh, b um, sig, or, uh, uh, delta ij um, operating on d u k uh, d x k. And here I want to write this in, in a different form. Um, and this is a form from Landau and Lifshitz. There's actually a, a slightly more general form if you have a bulk viscosity around. Um, and so that form is this, pi ij um, is equal to um, mu times um, what we had before, e ij um, plus, or excuse me, minus uh, two thirds sigma i j uh, d u k um, d x k and then we're going to have another term um, uh, minus um, excuse me let me get the sign right here uh, plus actually um, and the notation used in Lando and Lifshitz is this Greek character soup and then um, Delta I J uh, D U K D X K. So this this thing is proportional also um, to uh, the divergence the divergence of U um, and and this thing which we'll also call uh, mu sub B because it's a little easier to write for me is the bulk viscosity um, also called the um, second coefficient of viscosity. All right, um, so, so what of this thing? Um, uh, what, what of uh, mu sub b, or, um, or if I can try and draw it one more time here, um, this thing? What of this? What, what can we say about this? Well, we know, we know some things. So, um, this is this is a this is a viscous like force that that this is a viscosity a viscous stress that comes in when the when the flow is compressed or um, expanded. Um, so it enters with uh, div u. Um, this is the um, uh, compression. Or expansion effect. All right. So, so what we know then is that um, that whatever this thing is, uh, it's uh, irrelevant if we have incompressible flow. Um, if the divergence of u is zero, because the only spot that this bulk viscosity comes in the system. Um, is on a divergence of u term. So if divergence of u is zero, then whatever the bulk viscosity is, it won't affect the flow um, because it has no way, no way to influence it. Um, something else that we know is that um, mu sub b uh, is zero uh, for ideal monatomic gases. So if we just have something like say H, uh, an H gas, uh, or really like say say like we're inside the sun and we have H plus and E minus gases in our plasma, um, there is no there is no bulk viscosity effect, and the reason for this is that it's um, related to internal degrees of freedom, um, especially ones for uh, rotational. Uh, and uh, vibrational uh, motions. 
so this this is something that that really matters for our um, for our molecular gases. So so things like CH four uh, that's methane um, H two um, H two O uh, etc. Um, these will these all could have this. Um, this bulk viscosity because these have these vibrational and rotational degrees of freedom. All right. Um, all right. So how big is it? I guess might be our our, our next question for for more complicated molecules. Um, how big is mu sub b? Well, what we find out is that mu sub b is often similar to in size. Um, to the dynamic viscosity or much, much, much larger. Um, so um, for, for example, for carbon dioxide and methane and nitrous oxide, their bulk viscosity is hundreds or thousands of times larger than mu itself. Um, and characteristic values for something like, um, for, for some of these things can be in the range of uh, several centipascal or centiplus um, are, our unit of, of CGS viscosity. Um, another gas where this matters a lot is uh, H2. Um, for H2 hydrogen gas, um, broadly speaking, mu uh, bulk is 30 to 40 times larger than the dynamic viscosity. Um, and this this should really concern those of us doing models of, for example, gas giant, um, gas giant planetary atmospheres, which have diatomic molecular gases. In these systems, the bulk viscosity could actually play quite a role. Um, one reference you can look at for some more information on this is uh, uh, Kramer, Kramer uh, 2012 uh, physics, of, of fluids. Um, and uh, Kramer reviews many of these uh, bulk viscosities for a variety of interesting diatomic ideal gases. Now, um, something else about mu sub b is that mu sub b is generally uh, dependent on the thermodynamics. Um, so mu sub b is a uh, function often of the, the temperature. Um, so it, it can vary substantially with temperature. Um, and mu sub b is also um, very tied, unlike, unlike the dynamic viscosity, it's uh, tied to the rate at which the fluid flow is happening. So if, if we have some sort of frequency um, uh, or some sort of time scale of motion, the, the bulk coefficient of viscosity can have a dependency on the, on the frequency of motion or the time scale of motion. What, what this is picking up in a sense is um, uh, relationships between the frequency of the fluid motion, I'm using frequency here alluding to the fact of like um, wave motion, say sound waves or internal gravity waves. Um, if the frequency of those starts approaching a, 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 a time scale that's commensurate with, for example, the rotation frequencies, um, you might have a, a resonant phenomena very strongly driving those frequencies. Um, and this can lead to incredibly strong damping of acoustic motions. So this this bulk viscosity can be very important to the damping of sound waves um, and other compressive waves like that as they're, as they're traveling through a system.